if I think back to how we started doing deep brain stimulation when we first came here and compare it to how we do it now, um, I almost have to laugh. Uh, I mean, of, co of course, the concept was exactly the same, you know, delivering electrical pulses to some malfunctioning part of the brain. But uh, our ability to identify those locations and to image them, you know, the imaging is dramatically better now. So uh, back then, we couldn't get an MRI scan of high enough quality to actually see what we were aiming at. So everything was done with what we call indirect targeting. We would, we would look at a brain atlas and say, you know, relative to these things that we can see, where is that structure uh, in someone else's brain, which is a brain atlas, um, a map of the brain, if you will, and we aim based on the things we can see at the place where that thing ought to be. And then we would do microelectrode mapping to, to really fine tune that. Now, uh, we have sophisticated imaging that allows us to really see what we're aiming at uh, and atlases that we can deform to fit that patient's brain. And it's no longer good enough to target based on indirect targeting. Now we can see what we're aiming at and we can actually aim at the target that we see. And, you know, uh, under sort of uh, predictably that results in better outcomes. We know where we want to stimulate and we're actually stimulating uh, the thing we're aiming at. So the imaging and the targeting have gotten dramatically better. Uh, we used to use these acrylic plates and map everything out with, with colored pencils, uh, which makes me sort of laugh now because now everything is done on three-dimensional imaging computers, you know, and we can manipulate these images and move them around and look at the target and look at various trajectories and pick a safe trajectory. Uh, the safety of the operation has gotten dramatically better uh, because we understand that, you know, going through certain areas of the brain is a bad idea, 